So here's example three from the partial fractions topic. Hopefully you've had a look through ex example two, sorry, in that we're introducing the idea of how to deal with distinct linear factors in our denominator. In example two, we had two distinct linear factors. And in this case, if you notice, we've got three. It doesn't matter how many we've got. The key is that the, all these factors are linear, and each one of them is different from the other, which means we can use this first method in order to create our partial fractions. So the method, as I outlined in example two, is first of all, we write out the original rational function. And then we equate it to a series of partial fractions, which are going to be based on the individual factors in our denominator. So we know there's going to be something over x plus 1, something over x minus 2, and something over x plus 4. And by default, we say that all these fractions are being added together. We may find that one or more of them are subtracting in the end, but we'll deal with that when we get to it. We know from this type of uh, example, when we've got distinct linear factors, all of our numerators are going to be constant terms. There are no x terms in uh, these numerators, so we just call them a, b, and c, or some other letter uh, of your choice. I'm going to call them a, b, and c. So that's the first step, set out the template of what we want our solution to look like. Secondly, we're then going to multiply through by the original denominator. So if I do that, you don't have to do this in each case when you're doing it, but you get, you'll get to the point where you can do it by inspection. So I'm going to write this out um, and move it along. So you'll see on the left-hand side, if we multiply through by the whole denominator, that cancels out with the denominator, and we're just left with the numerator negative 12x minus 30. Then what happens is that on the left-hand side, we're going to multiply through by the same denominator. And in each case, then, something's going to happen. We can simplify it. In the first case with the, the first fraction, where the x plus 1, which is dividing on that first fraction, will cancel with multiplying by x plus 1. And we're going to have capital A multiplied by the other two factors, x minus 2 multiplied by x plus 4. If I were to consider doing the same thing with the second fraction, we can see that if I just keep the same uh, multiplier up there, the x minus 2 is going to cancel out with the x minus 2 there. So again, I'm going to multiply b by the other two factors, x plus 1 and x plus 4. And the same thing is going to happen with the, C, the third fraction here, x plus 4, cancels out with the x plus 4, which then leaves me with the other two fractions. Obviously, I, I'm not scoring them out this time. So we've got x plus 1 times x minus 2. So that's the second part. Multiply through by the denominator. And then the last part is to select values for x, which are going to help us solve this, which helps to reduce the equation by eliminating some of these unknowns, a, b, and c. And we do that, of course, by finding values for x, which are going to make some of these factors disappear to 0. So if I just start with this one here, if I make x 2, then that term there, x minus 2, is going to become 0. So that whole expression, a multiplied by 0, multiplied by 2 plus 4, doesn't matter what the other values are, that whole thing's going to be 0. So we can write down when x equals 2, the left-hand side becomes negative 12 times 2 minus 30 equals, but well, we know this whole thing is going to go to 0. Uh, the second one, um, is not going to go to 0, so we've got plus b multiplied by 2 plus 1 multiplied by 2 plus 4. 
And if we have a look at the third term, again, there's a x minus 2 term. That's going to go to 0. So multiplying by 0 means the whole of that last expression is going to become 0. That simplifies it a lot. So on the left-hand side, we have negative 24 minus 30 equals, what have we got, b multiplied by 3 multiplied by 6. So we have negative 54 is equal to 18b. If we divide through by 18, b equals negative 54 divided by 18. So b is equal to negative 3. There we go. We've got one of our values, b is equal to negative 3. We can now just repeat this process a couple of times in order to eliminate the other variables. So if we were to pick another value, let's go back up to uh, the top and we'll say that there's an x plus 4, which means that in order for that to become 0, x is going to have to be negative 4. So our second piece of working, and x equals negative 4. Well, what does our left-hand side become? Negative 12 times negative 4 minus 30 equals. Now, again, that first expression is going to go to 0 because we've chosen x to be negative 4. So we're going to have 0 in the first one. And in the second expression, we have an x plus 4 factor as well. So that's going to go to 0. And we're left with the term, the term multiplying by c. So we've got c. If x is negative 4, we've got negative 4 plus 1. And we've got negative 4 minus 2. If I simplify that, I've got negative 12 times negative 4 is positive 48 minus 30. And we've got c multiplied by negative 3 multiplied by negative 6. And just working through that, 48 multiplied with minus 30 is 18. And we've got negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18c. C is therefore 1. And the third and final value of x that I'm going to pick, well, we need to find the other one, the other factor that we haven't explored yet, which is um, x plus 1. And in order for that to become 0, x has to be negative 1. x equals negative 1, then what can I do? I can substitute in negative 1. you notice that I'm not trying to substitute and evaluate that left-hand side in my head. I could do, uh, but there's plenty of places to make mistakes here. And I always find it's helpful just to substitute in and then look at what you've got in order to make sure that you're... Uh, <coughs> making the correct decisions, particularly when there's negatives flying around. So the left-hand side, we've got that. Go back up to have a look at my expression here. Um, I've got a times x minus 2 times x plus 4, so that's going to stay intact this time. So we've got a, we've got x minus 2 and x plus 4. Check that. This will be up for that. Okay. Now the other two terms both have an x plus 1 uh, multiplier in it. That's going to go to 0 in both cases. So I know that both of these are going to go to 0. So simplifying this, 12 minus 30 equals a times negative 3 times 3. Negative 18 is equal to negative 9a. Divide 2 by negative 9, a is therefore 2. So I've got my three values for a, b, and c. So what I can do is finish off my calculation. We can start off by saying, therefore, uh, negative 12x minus 30 all over my denominator. Just get that right. Plus 1 minus 2 and plus 4. is equal to, well, we started off at the top by suggesting that our denominators were going to be 
x plus 1, x minus 2, and x plus 4. And just at the side, uh, I'll write down that we found uh, that a was 2, find that b was negative 3, and we find that c had the value of 1. So we're going to fit those in. So just checking that a was the letter over x plus 1, yep. So that becomes 2 over x plus 1. We've got negative 3 over x minus 2. Now you could write that as negative 3. Remember that we're nominally adding there and there. But what we would do with our constant term is negative. We would simply put a minus sign instead of a plus sign and just have that as negative. There's a wee issue uh, which might arise later on which we'll talk about in a different example. But for now, we've got negative 3 uh, over x minus 2 plus c is positive 1. So we can finish it off by putting a 1 there and there is my answer.